Well, people are probably going to remember when I was up in Central Oregon and asked to lecture about the eclipse and then drive an hour east to the Painted Hills. So I'm going to start doing a pastel. I've been talking about doing this for quite a while, as you can see. This is a little overblown in color here because the, the computer screen reads a little too heavy in color. And uh, maybe I can tone it down just a bit. It just gets darker and more saturated looking. But the Painted Hills Desert is a beautiful spot that uh, many people came from around the world to photograph the uh, total eclipse of the sun that day. They wanted to get that foreground with this in the sky, of course, is what I got. And uh, again, this is a little harsh in contrast here off the screen, but uh, with the telescopic equipment underneath it that I was using, um, the Sony NEX camera straight through the back of a uh, Celestron Nexstar 5 inch Cassegrain with a 200 millimeter telephoto on top, piggybacked with another Sony NEX camera on its back, which actually took that close up. That you see there of the actually the wide angle of the, at a 200 millimeter it was more of a wide angle than what was actually right through the, the telescope there as you can see um, a much larger image of the sun so i'm going to try to work on this today and uh, i've been talking about this for months that i was going to do a pastel sketch of the whole event to recap it and uh, I'm going to show how I start out with the pastels here. Now this looks rather warm. I probably should have balanced the color to this a little better. Um, but I'm working under room lights here and, or incandescent lamps. Um, so you, you can see a, a finished piece here I did a few years ago of the total eclipse of the moon uh, at night from the Vista House in the Columbia River Gorge. And those works are uh, probably going to be several years old now. I haven't done a serious work for several years. So I've got this roughed in. I had to try to decide if I was going to work with the pastels on, uh, on light paper or dark. Uh, as many people found out, it is, uh, it's difficult to uh, determine when you photograph something like a total eclipse of the sun. It's... Uh, it's a very bright object in daylight skies, so uh, it's difficult to photograph, as, as is the total eclipse of the moon at night, of course. Many different lighting situations, but uh, over the years you probably saw some of these online that I had put up. This one was on a NASA website for a couple of days. Uh, Spaceweather.com had run it for uh, several days in their front page, and it drew a lot of uh, interesting um, attention. I had emails from all over the world. People wanted to know if I, I would sell it to them. But uh, of course, I'm not. Uh, I'm not in the business of selling this art. It's just done as a hobby, really. It's been used for lectures that I've been asked to do. As you can see, what I've got in the background here is also a uh, one of my most inspiring books. I like to look through occasionally. It's uh, put out originally in the late 1940s written by Willie Lay, famous science writer, and uh, of course it's all about the art of Chesley Bonestell. And uh, I probably saw some of this art uh, in library books as a child. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just take this down because I haven't got it clipped up to stay right. But there's another one yet that I didn't expose yet. I'm just moving the art papers down here. That's it. Of course, a three-quarter moon with the famous uh, Bay of Rainbows or uh, Sinus Iridum feature uh, about the second, passing the second uh, half of the moon phase throughout each month. You see this on the edge, which is really impressive, and that I sketched a few years ago. But Bonestell's art is something that uh, probably caught my eye as a child. Um, this particular book actually shows a lot of color plates, although there are some in black and white, too. Um, pictures like this are what are known to have inspired Stanley Kubrick to try to emulate this in the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey of actually flying over the surface of the moon. Bonestell had, uh, had made these paintings back in the early 1950s and uh, 
which are now believed to be the big inspiration for our space travel today. It's going down in the history books being rewritten that the biggest inspiration for starting NASA and the American Space Agency was uh, Von Stell's art in famous magazines. So his paintings of the moon look so realistic that uh, when they were shown in magazines, it really got people interested in, in possibly supporting him and uh, starting really space exploration, with planning for it anyway by the 1960s. This, uh, this is rather archaic looking rocket ship that looks like this uh, isn't up quite with the times that we achieved in the 1960s when they actually landed on the moon. This is still back in the late 40s. But this piece I think was done in, uh, I'm looking for the date on it, I don't see it here now. I think it was early 1950s then. So, uh, as much as people think I just do photography of the night sky and what I showed here in uh, um, so I've got music going here in the background. I didn't want to play anything off the radio because if I put it up into a video, it ends up being pulled down on YouTube. Uh, infringes on copyright. So I'm playing a young lady's music. She's playing live, kind of harp guitar style, in one of our big art events here every month in the art section in downtown Portland. But I'll try to put the camera directly over the... Uh, pastel sheets here just to give people an idea of what uh, what these look like as they start out. They don't look like much in the beginning and uh, like they're very sketchy and very uh, just very roughed in. As you can see the, the bright white paper here is almost too bright. I'm going to try to take the light down from it because it's it's a little too glaring in the camera. But starting out doing the painted hills and trying to determine the uh, the colors of the chalks is uh, another element of doing pastels. Um, again, they're starting out as very simple sketchworks. There's the sun on the top of the sky as I'm going to portray it, and uh, the uh, initial work looks very very sketchy and just linear. But eventually, you've also got to determine as the pictures looked that I showed there on the web of it. Um, I'll just move over that for a second again just to refer to it so people get an idea of what we're talking about. But the... Uh, That's great. The... Uh, the image of the sun was rather golden looking as you can see. Well, like it comes out looking blue I guess in the in the camera, but... Um, Unfortunately, it's uh, to the eye, it was much more golden looking. So I've chosen pastel chalks that look um, like the Krona did there uh, over the telescope equipment that I had portrayed below it in a piece I put up on. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and take that music off for now and find something else to play here. <laughs> 